When I returned to campus this spring, I found myself getting, taking the time to get to know the class trees with a dear friend because I'd once heard someone say that we walk in the literal and metaphorical shade of former Wellesley students. Seniors, as we leave today, whether you have only a few minutes or a few hours left here after commencement, I encourage you all to get to know a tree and return to it at our 5, 10, 25 year reunion. See how much it's grown. See how it's still standing. And know that you will still be standing too. And on that note, I am absolutely honored to be standing before you today to introduce one of my dearest friends as our 2021 student speaker. She's a Haitian Jamaican anthropology and Spanish double major, the president of Upstage, and being around her makes you feel like you're experiencing the warmth of the sun from both sides. Our student speaker fell into my orbit the same way that most things at Wellesley tend to. She sent me an email, y'all. <laughs> no, seriously. As many of you surely know by now, especially this past week, I send a lot of emails into the void. But Leah, Leah would respond something sweet or let me know she laughed at one of my silly jokes. And if the rest of y'all didn't, that's okay. And she made my day every single time. Leah is one of the most intentional people I've ever met. When she tells you we should get lunch sometime when she runs into you on campus, she means it. And when she sets up camp next to you in the Palm living room at 11 p.m. the night before theses are due, you know she'll be right there with you until you're both finished. And at 3.09 a.m. on Friday, May 7th, thesis and seniors, y'all were there, with a cup of orange juice and a smile, Leah was right there with me. In the words of one of her advisors, Leah has consistently and generously given of herself while at Wellesley, and for that, we have all been made better. And Professor Angela Carpenter told me, she does Wellesley proud, and as a fellow Jamaican, she does Jamaica proud. When I asked one of her best friends, she said, when I met her four years ago, I knew I wanted to know her forever. And just between all of you and me and Leah, my dear, so do I. Class of 2021, I am honored to welcome to the stage my dear friend and your student commencement speaker, Leah Patricia James. Where's my mask? Yeah. Surprise, Dad. <laughs> I trust you'll all forgive whatever lipstick has made its way from my lips to my nose and also my chin, thanks to my mask. <laughs> Hello, and thank you, Katie and Shreya, for those beautiful words and for guiding us through this ridiculous year. <laughs> Members of the Board of Trustees, President Johnson, distinguished guest representative Liz Miranda, faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow members of the Evergreen class of 2021 here and online, good morning. Or good afternoon or good evening. I know at least one member of our class is watching from New Zealand and it's about 3 a.m. there. So to you, enjoy that cup of coffee for the both of us. <laughs> it is a privilege to be here today. There's a Haitian proverb that says, 
songez la pli qui leve maiu. It translates roughly to remember the rain that made your corn grow. When I was younger, I used to think that this proverb evoked nothing but beautiful, peaceful imagery of morning showers that culminated in a bountiful harvest. The rain that made your corn grow. One day, when I was about 15 years old and placing the third empty bucket on my bedroom floor to collect water in the middle of a hurricane, it dawned on me that rain in that proverb might actually have been meant to represent hardship. The rain that made your corn grow. After four incredibly rainy and snowy years, I've decided that both interpretations of the proverb hold water. The earliest Wellesley memory I associate with rain is one of my first, our spring open campus 2017. Since I'm an international student, I hadn't had the cross-country college tours that I'd seen others have on TV. Wellesley was one of the only schools I'd had the privilege of visiting. As many of you will recall, it rained nearly the whole time, or at least that's how I remember it. I'd get lost in the fog at least thrice, trying to get from French house where my host lived to Bates for a meal. It's a wonder that so many of us made it through that freezing cold, wet weekend, still excited to enroll. But we did. Since then, I have made more memories than I can possibly share in one nostalgic speech. Plus, sharing my own Wellesley memories would feel far too self-centered. We all know there's no universal Wellesley experience. This rings even truer, considering that many of us did not spend our senior spring on campus. This past year, the Wellesley experience involved professors and interviewers seeing our made and, in my case, often unmade beds, our cats or dogs or lizards or home improvement projects regularly attending classes with us and using bad Wi-Fi instead of bad weather as an excuse to miss class. So no, there is no universal Wellesley experience. We haven't all had to weather the same storms. And folks, looking at the forecast last night, I must admit that I wrote in so many last minute rain jokes that I'm very glad I will not have to subject you all to. <laughs> anyway, despite our varied experiences, there are a few things I am sure will be familiar to most of us. We're all familiar with tears, right? Tears of joy, relief, distress, remorse, and just about everything in between. Late nights that turned into early mornings without a wink of sleep, that feeling during the week of orientation, and perhaps every week after that, that we had maybe been admitted by accident. Not knowing exactly what the orientation theme stretch out loud really meant. Was that just me? Receiving our ninth or 90th school-wide email about a missing snack from Trader Joe's or a number two pencil. Recognizing that we may never again participate in a forum as lively, as divisive, and as controversial as the Wellesley Memes Facebook page. Finally, living through March 12, 2020. I think we all remember that one, that rain. Four years in, I am still blown away by the radical acts of courage and advocacy that I see spearheaded by members of our class. Holding members of the community accountable to a higher standard of empathy, holding the administration accountable to the values that attracted us to Wellesley in the first place, <laughs> and insisting relentlessly in any way we can that Wellesley be the place it vowed to us that it would be. If there's one thing I hope Wellesley has done for you all that I know it has done for me, it's this. Wellesley has given me the space to find myself. 
I hope during your time at Wellesley that you've discovered something about what drives you, who you are, who you like, and what you want, or at least what you absolutely don't want to do with your life. I can't be the only one who has experienced a moment of crisis when asked where I see myself in five years. Am I the woman who will that every Wellesley communication insists that I can and should be? Plus, will what? <laughs> I'm meant to make a difference in the world? How? Where? <laughs> Why me? In a feeble attempt to answer these questions, I've decided to quote the famous Wellesley alum, Nora Ephron, like many a student speaker before me. In her address to the class of 1996 at their commencement, which thankfully was a lot rainier than ours is, <laughs> I had to sneak one in there, Ephron said, one of the things people always say to you if you get upset is, don't take it personally. But, she continues, Listen hard to what's going on, and please, I beg you, take it personally. While that was all the way back in 1996, Efron's charge is timeless. Our college experience is bookended by two divisive and frightening US presidential elections and the renewal of a revolutionary era for racial justice. Over the past four years, we have joined fights that we did not start fights that were started by our ancestors and that are still far from over. Fights being fought on stolen land, both here and abroad. We must continue to take this personally, understanding that liberation is a global pursuit and that your freedom is my freedom, is their freedom, is our freedom. This, this is the rain that makes our corn grow. It is our responsibility to keep surviving and to fight for the survival of all of us, especially those of us whose belonging and right to live in this country are called into question every day. On that note, to my black, indigenous, Asian, Latine, Immigrant, low income, non binary, trans, first gen, and other minority sibs. To those among us at the intersections of the identities I just named, the odds did not want us to be here. And yet, here we are. Here we are, thanks to all of you who supported us. Now to those watching who dreamed of being here to see your child, grandchild, cousin, parent, or mentee graduate from Wellesley. To those whose degrees are dedicated to a grand-mère, an hermanito, a yeye, a samchon, a shangazi. To my mother, who lost her battle here on earth, but who I know is watching me now, just like she said she would. It pains me that because of death, circumstance, or a global pandemic, we could not have everyone we love gathered in one place to celebrate this monumental achievement. Thank you for being the push we needed to submit that assignment, to ask that question, to take that class, to attend those office hours, to follow through. Thank you for being our reign. Now, to every member of this evergreen class, we can be revolutionary. You are revolutionary. 
being who you are in a world doing its best to make you conform is a radical act. Like Representative Miranda says, embrace joy as resistance. One day, if each of us does the work that needs to be done, maybe joy won't have to be resistance anymore. Maybe it can just be joy. Songez la pluie qui levait Mayu. Remember the rain that made your corn grow, evergreen class, in both senses of the proverb. Remember the torrential downpours that you overcame to get to this moment. You did that. You made it. You survived. <laughs> At the same time, remember the peaceful mist that nourished us, the dining hall worker who gave you a kind smile, the custodian who let you run frantically and unpee before your next class before they close the bathroom for cleaning. The goose that did not chase you across Sev Green. <laughs> what an adventure we've had, stretching out loud these past four years. Stay loud. Say what needs to be said. Consciously and deliberately work to dismantle the systems of oppression that you see at work in each of your own communities. Be an ally be an advocate, be a co-conspirator for change. It has been a distinct honor and a great pleasure to learn with and from you, to be held accountable by you, and to love you. Remember the rain. I can't wait to see what grows.